Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. Currently, we are in Ezekiel chapter 38, and this is going to be kind of an interesting study as we talk about Gog and Magog. Uh, who are they? Is it Russia? Is Russia going to attack Israel? Hold your hearts on that. Um, but it is going to be some interesting prophecies about this, and some of the exactly kind of what it means. So let's uh, jump right in it. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, and it says, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, turn your face towards Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Mesha and Tubal. Now, Mesha and Tubal seem to be a land. First of all, Gog, let's get into the idea of Gog and Magog. Many people believe, many scholars believe, so this is going to be kind of out of my lane here, uh, but many scholars believe Gog and Magog, this, this land that it's referring to, it's kind of north, which would make it Russia. So therefore, there's a lot of people who believe that Russia is going to attack uh, Israel. And I'm going to say hold on there because there's, there's not a lot of specific details for that. And, and, I, and I'll explain as I go. And, I, and I'm always cautious about people when they make these kind of quick, rash to me interpretations. Because um, not all interpretations are always true. For example, there is an interpretation about the fig tree referring to Israel. I have not saw that. In, I have not seen that in scripture. Um, people say that a generation is 40 years. I haven't seen that <laughs> in scripture. And I say that because they say, when you see the fig tree, and so then the interpretation is when you see Israel go back to the land. I haven't, I have not seen that anywhere. Then they, they, they say, well, then that generation would not pass, means 40 years. So if you tie it all together in 1947, when Israel got to the land, they say, well, see, the Bible says prophecy that when you see the fig tree, which is Israel, going to the land, then that generation, 40 years, well, that would have been, let's say, according to this in 1947, when Israel became a nation, that would have been 40 years later, 1987. Well, we have certainly have come and gone from there. Um, so if you look at Tenebae, but a region, however, it does... The Magog seemed to be what it was one of the descendants of Japheth. So one of the, if you go back to one of the three sons of Noah who survived the flood, Ham, believed to be people, the dark skinned people, you know, the cursed ones, right? Um, and then uh Japheth is believed to be those who settled in the um European area, in other words, the white people. But that's not always concrete though. It it's certainly could be, but again, we need to be very careful again about making very things that the Bible doesn't specifically say. However, with that said, when he says right here, he says, turn your face towards Gog, and then he says, of the land of Magog. So that Magog is where you tie to Jephthah, so that would seem to be this region of Russia, maybe, right? So Gog and Magog, then the princes of Mishael and Tubal. Part of this, I'm trying to think which one it is. I think Gog, or the, I think Tubal, I think it's one area which probably is around Turkey. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go too far on that because this that's out of my lane. I'm going to let the scholars. I'll refer you to the scholars on that. So he says, prophesy against him. Now, what what him? who is the him again? Go back, son of man, turn your face towards Gog. And then he says, of the land of Magog. So Gog is seems like to be a person, right? Of the land of Magog. And then he said, the chief prince of Meshach, and, uh, Meshach, I'm sorry, Meshach and Tubal. So that's, so the so Gog, it seemed to be the person that God is prophesying against. All right. So then he says, uh, prophesy against him and say, this is what, this is what, the Lord God says, look, I'm against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, right? So that's, again, so 
Gog seemed to be kind of a the person, and then Meshach, you can even say uh, Magog is the land. Chief Prince of Meshach and Temple, I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and I will bring you out with all of your army, including <coughs> horses and riders who are splendidly dressed in a huge company armed with shields and bucklers, all of them brandishing swords. Persia, now Persia, of course, maybe modern day Iran, Kush, and put are with them, all of them with shields and ham, uh, helmets. Sort of this kind of Mediterranean area, North African area. He says, um, and put over them, all of them with shields and helmets, Gomer with all his troops, Beth de Garma from the remote part of the north, along with all his troops, many people are with you. Now, here is a very interesting thing here. So it, 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 the, who, this vast army goes beyond, if you wanted to say Russia, it's certainly going to be much, much broader than just Russia. And that's important when you see all these particular nations here that he's talking about. Like Persia, right? Which, okay, if you look at it, Persia today, we modern day Iran. So it's not, it's not just Russia. Okay, you can certainly say it may include Russia. But not only Russia, that's going to this this modern this last day that God is going to bring against the people of Israel. Verse seven says, Be prepared and get yourself ready, you and all your company who have been mobilized around you, and you uh you will be their guard. After a long time you will be summoned. In the last years you will enter a land that has been restored from war and regathered from many peoples to the mountains of Israel, which has long been ruined. They would be brought out from the peoples, and all of them now live securely. You, all your troops, and many peoples with, with you will advance, coming like a thunderstorm. You would be like a cloud covering the land. So this, again, you... I want you to see something. This vast army, okay? And I'm going to show you something in a moment. This is what the Lord God says. On that day, thoughts will arise in your mind and you will divide the evil plain. You will say, I will go up against a land of open villages and I will come against a tranquil people who are living securely, all of them living without walls and without bars and gates in order to see, spoil, and carry off plunder to turn your hand against ruin, now inhabited against a people gathered from the nations who have been acquiring cattle possessions and who live at the center of the world. Kind of interesting right there. Notice this. Um, by the way, I, I, I would say this, that Israel probably is considered the center of the world. Verse 13, Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, with all its rulers, will ask you, have you come to see spoil? Have you assembled your hordes to carry off plunders, to make off with silver and gold, and to take cattle in possessions, and to seize a great spoil? Therefore prophesy, son of man, and say to Gog, remember Gog is the person, the leader, this is what the Lord God says, on that day when my people Israel are dwelling securely, will you not know this, and come from your place in the remote parts of the north, you and many peoples with you, who are all riding horses, mighty hordes, and a huge army, you will advance against my people Israel like a cloud covering the land. Notice he said, so 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 God is going to mount a war against Israel. It will happen in the last days. Gog that I will bring you against my land so that the nation may know me when I show myself holy through you in their sight. This is what the Lord God says. Are you the one I spoke about in the former times through my servant, the prophets of Israel, who for years prophesied in those times that I would bring you against them? Now, 
on that day, the day when Gog comes against the land of Israel. So here it is. Gog will come against the land of Israel. This is a declaration of the Lord God. My wrath will flare up. I will swear in my zeal and my fiery rage. On that day, there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish, the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, every creature that crawls on the ground, and every human being on the face of the earth will tremble before me. The mountains will be thrown down, and the cliffs will collapse, and every wall will fall to the ground, and I will call for a sword against him on my mountains. The declaration of the Lord God, and every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will execute judgment on him with the plague and bloodshed. And I will pour out a torrential rain, hailstone, fire, brimstone on him, as well as his troops and as many people who are with him. I was just I would display my I would display my greatness and holiness and reveal myself in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Now, um I I want to show you something. There's a couple other verses here. I'm not going to go into, I don't think I'm going to get to 39 yet. But I want to show you this verse here. This, this kind of this, this thing in terms of, there's a couple of thoughts here. Um, so first, let me show you Zechariah. Um, Zechariah. 14. I want to show you something. Now, remember what he just said there. And I'm going to read this. I'm going to read two verses of scripture. The one from Zechariah chapter 14. And then I want to read from Revelation. Um, verse 14 says, A day of the Lord is coming when your plunder will be divided. In your presence, and I will gather all nations against Jerusalem for battle. The city would be captured, the houses looted, the women raped. Half of the city would go into exile, but the rest of the people uh, would be removed from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on the day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem in the east. The Mount of Olives will be split in half from the east to the west, forming a huge valley, so that half the mountain will move to the north and half of the south, you will flee by my mountain valley, for the valley of the mountains will extend to Ezel, Ezel, and you will flee as you fled from the earthquakes in the day of Uzziah, the king of Judah. Now again, this is going to be a terrible time for Israel, but notice when these nations come against them. Then he says, then the Lord my God will come and all of his holy ones with him. On that day, there will be no light and no sunlight, and the moonlight will be diminished. It will be a day known only to Yahweh, without day and night. But there will be no light. Now, I'm going to stop here because there's going to be something I'm going to get into in, in chapter 39. Okay? In chapter 39. Um, but let me show you something. So, you see this, this again, prophecy of the nations coming against Israel, and then notice they're going to almost be defeated, and then God's going to step in. And I think that this is a picture of the second coming of Jesus. Um, it's one other thing I want to see here. Um, I'll come back to this here. Let me show you something in the book of Revelations. Now this, again, it's, I'm, I'm going to come back to this in the next video because in <laughs> uh, chapter 39, he's going he's gonna to talk about something that's quite interesting. Um, uh, look at, this is, so this is, um, I'm going to start reading verse 11. This is Revelation chapter 19, verse 17. Then I saw heaven open. And there was a white horse, its rider is called Faithful and True. 
and the judges make war in righteousness. His eyes were like a fiery flame, and many crowns were on his head. He had a name written that no one knows except himself. He wore a robe stained in blood. His name is the word of God. The armies that were in heaven followed him on white horses, wearing pure white linen. And a sharp sword come from his mouth, so that he might strike the nations with it. He will shepherd them with a rod of iron. He will also trample the wine press, the fierce anger of God, the Almighty. And he had the name written on his robe and on his thigh, King of kings and Lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing on the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds flying overhead, Come gather together for the great supper of the Lord. Now I want you to keep this in mind too, because again, we're going to, under the cover, we're going to go, especially when we get to uh, chapter 39. So that you may eat the king, eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of commanders, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and, and of, the, of the riders, and the flesh of everyone, both free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beasts and, uh, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the riders on the horse. <laughs> this is great, right? Against the rider of the horse and against his army, right? Uh, they're going to actually try to fight Jesus. But the beast was taken prisoner, along with the false prophet who performed signs in the presence and deceived those who accepted the mark of the beast and those who worship his image with the sign. Both of them were thrown into the lake of fire, which burned with sulfur, and the rest were killed with the sword that came from the, from the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Now, that's a lot I know I read. I'm talking about prophecy right here. So you, you you come to the Great Tribulation, and then at one point, you see the armies of the earth that mount an attack against Israel. They almost devastate it, and then God steps in. Okay, so now as we, we read this judgment against Gog, he said, I'm going to gather you, right? So I'm going to read one more verse. Um, in verse 7, this is chapter 20, and it says, And when the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out and deceive the nations at the four corners of the earth. Now listen to this. Gog and Magog. So what is he going to do? He's going to go out and deceive the nations, Right? And then Gog and Magog, and then he says to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea that came over the surface of the earth and surrounded the encampment of the saints. Now get this, the beloved city. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed them. The devil who deceived them was thrown in the lake of fire and, uh, and so forth. The beast and the false prophet are, and then they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now notice again, he mentions here, Gog and Magog. And that's kind of interesting with the, with the kind of prophecy that he is talking about. Now, again, we're going to get into that because it's going to be a very interesting, a very interesting prophecy more when we get into uh, 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 Ezekiel 39. He's going to talk about that, that destruction um, that, and then it's actually going to even say that, um, during this period of time. Now, the time frame is kind of interesting because you see when Jesus comes back, as we read in Revelation 14 and Zechariah 14, when the Lord comes, that ushers in the millennial reign of Jesus. And then we see at the end of the millennial reign of Jesus, again, Gog and Magog. And, and here it seems to be this innumerable amount of people, not just one particular nation such as Russia, but an innumerable amount of people who will again, who will try to attack Israel again under the reign of Jesus, the Lord Jesus, who has been ruling on the earth for a thousand years. Now, again, I'll get more into this again when we get into chapter 39 in the next study. But I wanted to show you those two verses well, there were actually three three passages, Zechariah, where it talks about Jesus coming. And again, we're going to even see more how the, the description of that time 
it's it's going to be amazing. So I'm going to put it all together in the next study. But I just want to show you those three those three passages here in conjunction with what is referred to as Gog and Magog, which I don't only think he's talking about Russia, but I think he's talking about a mighty nation. And I certainly believe Russia can certainly be a part of that because it is certainly referring to the land of the north, but a vast innumerable um, army with other nations that's going to side in. All right, guys, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to VP the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you ever thought a comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. And I will see you in the next study.